What's up everyone, I'm Nick. This should be another relatively easy video. We're gonna look at two SwiftUI modifiers called on appear and on disappear. And they are exactly what you think they are. It is a call that we can make as soon as a view appears or disappears on the screen. So these modifiers are perfect if you have situations in your app when you maybe don't want to actually load data, you don't want to fetch that data from your database until it appears on the screen. So maybe something like an image where you don't want to actually download the image unless it's going to actually be on the screen, that would be a perfect situation for the on appear call. They're really easy to use, really easy to implement. So I'm going to show you a couple examples and let's get into it. All right, I am back in Xcode. This should be a quick video. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. This one will be a Swift UI view and let's call it on appear bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on the canvas and let's get coding. Let's set up the screen quickly. Let's do a navigation view. Open the brackets in here. We'll put a scroll view and in the scroll view, let's add a text and I want this text to be dynamic. So let's create a variable at the top. We'll do at state var. Uh, my text of type string We'll put this as starting text Doesn't really matter what we put we're going to change this on appear. So my text we're going to put into our text here my text and If I click resume on the canvas, we'll see that the text starts out saying starting text Let's also add a title to this view. So we'll do dot navigation title and we'll just say on appear Bootcamp and we can see right now it says starting text. And when this scroll view appears on the screen, I want to change this text. So the easiest way to do that, and it's so simple in Swift UI, literally at the bottom of the scroll view as a modifier, we are going to add dot on appear. And I'm going to go to the second completion that has a perform where we can add a function. And then in this closure, I can actually add a function on whatever I want to happen. Uh, when this scroll view appears onto the screen. So what do I want to happen? I want my text to change. So I'm going to say my text equals this is the new text. So when this scroll view appears immediately, as soon as it appears, this is going to run and this is just going to change my text to this is the new text and this text should update. So it is kind of hard to tell on our preview because right now as we're looking at it, the scroll view and the view has already appeared on the screen. And that's why it says this is the new text and we can see that here. But in reality, what's really happening is when this view is initialized, it's starting with start text. And as soon as the scroll view is drawn onto the screen, this on appear function is going to run and it's going to, and it's going to set the my text equal to new text. Now to elaborate this a little bit, I'm going to add a delay in this function. So to add a delay to anything in Swift, we use something called a dispatch queue. And it looks a little ugly if you've never used this before, but it's very easy to use. We will call dispatch queue dot main dot async after. And we're going to use this one with a deadline and an execute. And in the deadline, we're just going to give it a time. So we're going to use dot now plus five and five stands for five seconds and then in the execute section we're going to hit enter on that and now we have this closure and we're going to put my text inside this closure so to quickly sum up what's going to happen here when the scroll view appears on the screen immediately it's going to call on appear so whatever is in this code is going to get called immediately however this function here this dispatch queue is adding a delay into this function. So if this gets called immediately, but because we're using this dispatch queue, what's happening in this closure isn't going to execute until the deadline. And the deadline of this is now plus five seconds. So what's really going to end up happening is the scroll view is going to appear and then five seconds after it, because we did plus five, the text will change. So when I click resume on the canvas, it says starting text and about five seconds later, this should change and update to this is the new text. 
So this on appear is very handy if we need to load certain things, maybe when certain views come onto the screen. And we're not going to touch on this much, but there also is a dot on disappear function. And it's the same thing. I'll go to the perform. And in here, I could set my text equal to uh, ending text. And we would never actually see this happen because this on disappear is only going to get called when the view leaves the screen. And this is predominantly used for like cleaning up things. If you have something that's running and you want to end it, like if you had functions on here that were going to your database and then you wanted to cancel all those functions when the user, user leaves the screen, well, you could use that in the on disappear. It's a little more complicated and we're not going to get into it in this video, but I just want you guys to realize that there is an on disappear as well. And the last thing I want to mention in this video is that it does matter where these modifiers are, this on appear in relation to the items, because when this scroll view gets drawn onto the screen it might be different than when this text draws onto the screen. So if I put this on appear on here versus on the text directly versus on the navigation view, it will be different. So in this scroll view, let's add a lazy V stack. Because remember when we use large data sets, it's smarter to use lazy stacks because they don't all load at once. They load as they come onto the screen. I will open the brackets. In this lazy V stack, let's add a for each loop. We're going to use the range completion with an integer. And we're going to loop 50 times. So we'll do 0 dot dot less than 50. So from 0 to 49, which is 50 loops. On the content, let's hit enter. We don't need this completion, so I'm just going to highlight it and delete it and add an underscore because we actually don't need to reference what index it is. We don't really care right now. And then for each of these 50 loops, let's add a rounded rectangle to the screen. Let's give it a corner radius of 25. Let's give it a frame with a height of maybe 200. And let's give it some extra padding. And what I'm going to do is add an on appear onto this rounded rectangle. And down here, we used on appear with the perform, but we can actually just call on appear and then open the brackets. And it's going to do the exact same thing here without the word perform. It's a little cleaner, more common that you'll see uh, just opening the brackets here. And then we can add a function. And what I want to highlight here is that we're adding this on appear to each rectangle. So each of these rectangles now has its own on appear function. So when this first rectangle appears, is going to be different than when the second or the third or the fourth one appears on the screen. So to keep track of this and just to highlight it, let's add a count of the rectangles. So let's do at state var count of type int and we'll set it equal to zero to start. And this count, every time we add a rectangle to the screen, let's just increment the count. So we'll do count plus equals plus equals one, adding one to the count. And let's just put that count into the title so that we can see it. So navigation title, let's just get rid of the word bootcamp. Let's do a colon forward slash open and close parentheses and we'll put the count inside. I'll zoom out here a little bit and let's click resume on the canvas and see what happens. So you can see immediately that when the screen loads, the count is three, right? We had the first rectangle, the second rectangle and the third rectangle. But we know as developers, there are actually 50 rectangles in this lazy stack. It's just that only three of them appeared. So if I start scrolling down, we can see that the count goes up to four, five, six, and each of these on appears are getting called when each of these rectangles come onto the screen. So this is super useful if you needed to download maybe an image for each of these uh, rectangles, if there was like a different image or something to download each time and you didn't want to download it all at the beginning, you could make sure that you only are downloading when certain things come onto the screen. So I just wanted to highlight that it is really important where these on appear or on disappear calls are located. Because if it's a modifier on this rounded rectangle or if it's a modifier on the entire scroll view is going to change when it appears and when it gets called. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
on appear and on disappear are just so easy and helpful uh, to us as developers. This is just makes it so, so easy to call a function when this gets onto the screen. And you guys also learned in this video how to use a dispatch queue and add a delay to your code. So I try to avoid using these delays whenever possible, but if you need to add a delay, you now know all you need to do is call dispatch uh, now and then add however many seconds you want to delay and then you can perform a function. So that's it on appear on disappear delays. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, I am Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and I'll see you in the next video.